Morning. And a warm welcome to those joining us on the live streaming and to also our Radio North Angus listeners this afternoon. We also welcome any visitors we have here this morning. We hope that you will find fellowship with us and we ask that you take a moment at the end of the service to put your name and address in the visitor's book on the transept on my right. There are some magazines left for collection in the large hall. There are also free will offering envelopes for collection by the elders for members in the district's in the ante room. The Kirk session meets tomorrow, Monday the 5th of December at 7.15 in the large hall. There will be a small meeting on Tuesday morning at half past ten for anybody who would like to be involved in the Christ Ingle service. This Wednesday the 7th of December, Timmers at the Kirk Cafe will be open from 10.30 to 12 noon. Please come along and support the children and be entertained at the same time. Next Sunday, the 11th of December, in Harmony, will be holding their Christmas concert here in the church at 2 p.m. Tickets are priced £8, which includes refreshments, and they are available from Vicky and any other members of the In Harmony Choir. On Sunday, the 18th of December, at 7 p.m., our Both Male Voice Choir will be holding their concert again in the church, along with the Montrose Town Band and the Makaton Choir. Tickets priced £10, which also includes refreshments. Following the Time to Remember service last Sunday, there is a memory tree in the church. If you'd like to write the name of a loved one on one of the tags and place it in the tree, you're very welcome. Though absent, they remain with us over the Christmas season. Please take a pebble to carry with you as you go. And if you know anyone who would benefit from receiving the church flowers or a pastoral visit, then please complete the cards available in the vestibule. Thank you. 
Thank you, Audrey, and good morning, everyone. Um, because we have some beautiful decorations, we're partway there with the decorations in church this year. Um, I, I'd like to thank uh, Diane and her team for the lovely tree. And, and for anybody who says to me, it's not maybe as tall as we've had before, tall trees are a problem this year because of last year's storms. So um, the silver wells have done the best they can for us. And also, Audrey didn't know this, but the visitor's book is on that side of the church rather than that side because we've got the memory tree over here and we've also got a beautiful nativity stable and scene. And I'm going to tell you that they have been made by Liz Aiken and Christine Southwood and they're lovely and if you want to know the full story, you can speak to Liz. Christine's away this weekend. <laughs> So thank you all to those who put the decorations up and to those who are going to complete things this week. We're going to continue with our Advent theme of WWF, and you know it's not the other things I said last week, waiting, watching, and following. And today we're going to look at Zechariah. But our call to worship comes from the Old Testament, from the book of Micah. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth and he will be our peace. A messenger will be born. Peace is coming. Someone to show the way. Peace is coming. A world is waiting. Peace is coming. Lord, we your people wait patiently, hanging on for Advent peace. And as we do so, we bring you ourselves we bring you our worship. So we're going to sing the first of our hymns this morning. It's an Advent hymn. It, the words will be on the screen. Um, it's also number 277 in the book. But whilst we are singing this hymn, the girls, Olivia and Charlie, will come round and collect from you the very generous gifts that you have brought today for those who are lonely and isolated in the community. Lisa and Caroline, you may need to help them. So that, and we will put them all around the tree. So we stand to sing our first hymn this morning, Hark the Glad Sound.
For those of you who are listening on the radio this afternoon, the girls are just bringing forward the last of the gifts. Uh, and for all of you, whether you are here in the building, watching on the live stream, or follow the Facebook page during the week, at the end of the service, I will arrange them all out and I will take some photographs so that you'll be able to see how wonderful the generosity is of the church family. And in the week to come, um, I will, and probably next Sunday morning, I will let you know where the gifts have gone to and the responses of the people. Many thanks. If you just pop them down and then we'll reorganise at the end of the service, that would be great. Now let's gather the thoughts of our hearts and the thoughts of our minds together in prayer. Let us pray. Advent God, in this season of bumper to bumper stress, with life that can become more crowded than the stores, God welcomes us to a feast of faithfulness where we may sit in peace and gentleness. In these times of rancorous rants and snide remarks, with people who are often too busy to offer words of compassion, Jesus <coughs> whispers words of hope for broken hearts, sings carols of justice for all the outsiders. In these days of more and more time spent with devices, and fewer moments with those who could touch us with joy. The Holy Spirit embraces us with peace that comforts and loves us with a passion beyond 140 characters. We bless you, our Lord God, that you spoke to us through your prophets, raising up for us a strong saviour from the family of your servant David. We thank you that through his life and witness, You've given to us, your people, the knowledge of salvation and the presence of the Holy Spirit to guide our feet into the way of peace. God of peace, we know your assurance that in your way we can have faith and hope. And so we offer once more ourselves and our gifts. And especially today, we ask that you would bless the gifts we offer to those alone in our community at this time of year, small tokens to brighten their day. That in the season of Advent and Christmas, your hope and peace may be found in this place, in this community, and further afield. Advent God, we live in a world where so many things seem upside down where there's injustice and some struggle to see right from wrong. And we know that we can all do things wrong or fail to get things right. We can hurt others and be hurt by them. Forgive us today, we pray, and lead us in better ways. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, the one whose coming we await to make all things right and to whom we now pray in the words Jesus himself taught, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> Girls, would you like to come out and join me? So this morning I have a, a couple of challenges, okay, um, for us to do. And so I'm, we're just going to get going without further ado. All right, so the first one is this. Okay, this, today it's all about communicating in ways 
that might not be the usual ways that we would communicate. Okay, so the first of the challenges is this, right? I'm going to um, get myself into a particular shape or uh, show a particular kind of expression, <coughs> all right? And I want you to be my mirror image. So what that means is you have to do exactly what I'm doing, all right? Okay? <coughs> And so, and when we get into that shape, instead of looking at one another, we will turn slowly to face everybody and we'll see if they think we've done a reasonable job. All right? So you don't both have to do it at the same time, so who wants to go first? <laughs> Charlie, you're going first. Okay. Right, are you ready? Yes. Well, you, I mean, maybe that was a bad choice, Olivia, because usually the first one is the easy one. All right, so the first one is this. Now you do the mirror image. Check which legs. Okay, now I, I know that I'm talking, but if I don't talk, the folk on the radio won't know what we're doing. So I have one hand up in the, in the air and one leg up in the air. Okay, right, mirror image. So we're going to turn and face everybody out here. Okay, ready? <laughs> How do you think she's doing? <laughs> she's not bad because she is doing a mirror image. It's not the same, but if we turn to face the mirror, she is doing what you would see in a mirror, even though it's not the same hand. Okay, right, you get the idea. Okay, so we make it more complicated now, Olivia. <laughs> right? You ready? <laughs> Are you ready to turn around and show everybody? <laughs> <laughs> For the people on the radio, I've got my thumbs in my ears and I'm wiggling my hands and we're pulling a very peculiar face. <laughs> okay, stop. Right, last one. You can both do this one. Okay, last one. Right, are you ready to face everybody? <laughs> and for the folk on the radio, we are crouching down on the floor and they can't see our heads, I don't think, because they're tucked into our chest. Okay, right, up you get, girls. Okay, so, that challenge was about a, a bit of humour, but it was also about completely imitating what the other person was doing without being able to talk about it, just watching what they were doing and copying it, okay? This one's different, second one. Now, I'm going to show you a word that nobody else will see, and you either have to act the word out like a charade or a charade, however you say it, or this time you can use other words, but you can't use the word that's there. So word association, if you like. Oh. So, okay. So I'll start off, all right? I've not got my glasses on, so I can't see where the words are. Right, okay. So, for example, what's the word if I tell you that it's an animal and it makes a noise that's a meow? Okay? So you can do that or you can do a charade. Right? Are you ready? Who's going first? <laughs> ah, you're keen this time. Right, Charlie. There you go, this word here. All right, so are you going to act it out? Or are you going to speak? speak. Right then, go on then. It's something that you do if you're going out. Um, be when you go out to play, what do you? What will you be doing? Either walking or. Somebody said it. Go on. You can say it now. Run. Running. That's right. Yes. Okay. You get the idea, right, Olivia? 
Uh, this one's not quite as easy. Are you going to do a charade? Right, okay. Right, so just keep doing it before anybody speaks out. For the people on the radio, she's using, she's got one, her left hand here, and then she's got another hand like this. Um, that doesn't, that's not very good for people <laughs> listening, is it? She's got her left hand, um, and she's holding her palm outstretched. She's got her little finger of her right hand and her thumb up, and she's holding it up towards her mouth in a kind of drinking motion. Right, what do you think she's trying to imitate, folks? A cup of tea, exactly. Okay. Right, okay. Are you, Im are you, you doing a charade or are you talking, Charlie? Okay. You're talking, right? Um, it's something where you might, it's something where horses are and it's something where you might actually get horses to ride. Where is that, what is that place called? Is it Excellent. stable? Yes, excellent. Very good. Okay, last one, Olivia. Oh. Olivia is, is demonstrating again. She's doing a charade and she's standing with her feet apart um, at, if you were looking at a clock, at about 10 to 2. And she's got both her arms up in diagonal motion as well. What do you think Olivia is, folks? Yeah, Olivia's a star. That's right. Ah, in more ways than one. Right, okay. So, the reason we're doing this today is the character that we're going to think about today um, as we move into the second week of Advent is a person called Zechariah, which is a strange name which we don't often hear today. And Zechariah, a little bit like Simeon and Anna last week, is one of the sort of walk-on parts in the nativity we don't often uh, spend a lot of time looking at him but we're going to try and learn from him today and the reason we did those two challenges was that Zechariah found that for a lengthy period of time he was unable to speak he was silent and so he had to find other means of communication he had to do charades to people to tell to express how he felt he had to watch people and make sure that he understood how they were feeling, you know, as we were copying in the first challenge, because he wasn't able to speak and ask them. So that's where we're going to go. Um, and at the end of the time, when he was able to speak again, he spoke beautiful words that spoke of peace. And peace is the theme of the second Sunday in Advent. And Kathleen, who is a member of our country dancing group here at the West Kirk, is going to come and share with us our second Advent carol reading. And then she's going to light the candle, and we will sing two verses of the Advent candle carol for this year. So if you two want to go and have a seat, Kathleen, if you want to come out, and I'll move my bits and pieces. <coughs> Every year we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light, as we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. <clears throat> Today we light the candle of peace along with the candle of hope. Lighting this second candle reminds us of the complexity of what it means to feel peace this year. With a year full of uncertainty, anxiety and fear, the Peace Candle invites us into a safe and secure space where we can just be. God of promise, come into our darkness. Renew your hope and peace in us. For you alone bring life out of death. May we know your peace in the silence, in the noise and the bustle, in the busyness of this Advent season, and may that peace extend from us to others. We light a candle for peace. May it light the way. <coughs> I 
And I thought we would be organised this week. Billy, are you on standby? <coughs> Third time lucky. Thanks, Kathleen. We now stand in to sing two verses of our Advent Candle Carol. <laughs> While the girls go out, I'm going to invite May to come and share with us our reading for today. A reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 1. And we're reading from verse 68 to 79. And that can be found on page 74 or 75 in the New Testament section of the Good News Bible. Read this bit for it. That's Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 68 to 79. Zachariah's prophecy. Let us praise the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to the help of his people and has set them free. He has provided for us a mighty saviour, a descendant of his servant David. He promised through his holy prophets long ago that he would save us from our enemies, from the power of all those who hate us. He said he would show mercy to our ancestors and remember his sacred covenant. With a solemn oath to our ancestor Abraham, he promised to rescue us from our enemies and allow us to serve him without fear, so that we might be holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. You, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High God. You will go ahead of the Lord to prepare his road for him, to tell his people that they will be saved by having their sins forgiven. Our God is merciful and tender. He will cause the bright dawn of salvation to rise on us and to shine from heaven on all those who live in the dark shadow of death, to guide our steps into the path of peace. Amen. Thank you, May. Continuing on with the theme of peace for today, we stand to sing our next hymn, which in the books is number 528, Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. <coughs>
Let's pray together. Loving Heavenly Father, on this second Sunday of Advent, as we think of your peace and as we think of the life and the words of Zechariah, we ask in the busyness of this season that your words and this time now of quiet and reflection would be to us a time of peace, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us in the midst of all the world's world's clamour and that we would know your presence today and as we continue throughout Advent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> this week has been a wee bit of a dreech week. I don't know if I say that word properly but it's been a bit grey and a bit gloomy and the nights have come in quite quickly. However, if you cast your mind back a few days, the start of the week was very bright. And I should have a picture here on the screen. Yeah, I do. That, uh, those two photographs are taken um, this Tuesday. They were taken this Tuesday at dawn, let me just make sure, yep, by a lady called Katie Bennett. And they're beautiful. And they were taken at sunrise and I want you to think about if you've ever been at a sunrise and watched a sunrise. I have to confess that the times that I've been and watched a sunrise has usually been on Easter Sunday morning. Um, although it's much easier to watch one if it's clear at this time of year because dawn is so much later. Anyway. If you have been present at a sunrise, just before the sun begins to come up, everything goes suddenly very quiet. The birds are not singing. There seems to be a general hush around, even if the weather conditions are a wee bit windy or um, a, a wee bit wet, there is this hush around. And then where the sun is in the east in the sky, the sort of vague light that has been there increases. And all of a sudden, there is this piercing brightness as the sun itself begins to emerge. And there is a real sense of the power and the strength of that sun in the sky as it suddenly begins to rise. And that moment only really lasts for a short period of time, because as the sun continues to rise, the birds begin to sing, and the day begins to carry on. But in that moment of actual sunrise, there is a silence, and it's really quite profound. The silence for Zechariah, um, the character who wrote the words that we spoke about today, or they read about today in the Bible passage, the character of Zechariah wasn't silent just for a few moments like a sunrise. He was silent for a whole nine months. So um, before we think about the words that he actually spoke, and how they might speak to us today, let's just think about Zechariah's situation. As I said to uh, Olivia and Charlie, he's another of what I would call the bit parts around the story of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. For Zechariah is the father of John the Baptist. He and his wife Elizabeth lived near to Mary and her family, although not in the same town, and they were faithful Jewish people. They were elderly people like Simeon and Anna. And isn't it interesting that it's actually to elderly people who the truth about the Messiah is first told. Anyway, they were elderly people and they were living in the town and Zechariah was a priest. Now that would mean that Zechariah, a little bit like Simeon and Anna, was well educated. He'd done the preparation that we were talking about last week. He knew his Jewish scriptures, and he and his wife 
were faithful attenders at church and they were faithful followers of the Jewish tradition. Zechariah is the first character mentioned in Luke's gospel. He's also the first to receive a visit from an angel. And Zechariah is human. He's like probably all of us if we were visited by an angel who said, um, despite your age, you are, your wife is going to have a son. And he didn't believe the angel. And because of that, he silenced, silenced for the whole of Elizabeth's nine month pregnancy. So a lot longer than the sunrise. Imagine what that must have been like for Zechariah. He's a priest. He's used to leading worship, to talking to people, to praying with people. And you and I both know that ministers do a lot of talking. But he's no longer able to talk. What must that mean for Zechariah? Well, for one thing, it will mean that he has to find other ways to communicate with people. Because he'll still have needs, he'll still want to express what he wants or how he's feeling. And as we were doing this morning, whether with actions or um, whether with writing things down, he will have to find different ways of communicating with his wife, with the people who come into the synagogue, and with other members of the community. So that's one side of things. But here's the other side of things. Because he can't speak, to a certain extent, he will be in the background, he will be slightly excluded from conversations because he can't take part. But that will allow him to do something else. He will be able to watch. The themes were, were waiting and watching and following. Well, Zechariah had to wait a long time, nine months. But he is also going to watch and to watch actively. And if you think about it, he would be able to see the expression and the joy on his wife's face when she found that she was expecting. He would also be able to watch the expressions and the interaction between his wife Elizabeth and her cousin Mary when Mary came to visit Elizabeth when she too knew that she was going to have a child. He would be able to watch the expressions and the interaction of the other priests in the synagogue of the people in the local community as his wife's pregnancy progressed and then when she gave birth and a little boy was born. He would be able to see things from a different point of view and his enforced silence gave him the opportunity to reflect and to watch. And as he waited then, perhaps, these words that May read, that he speaks today, this beautiful, what has become known as the Benedictus, is described. And in that Benedictus, Zechariah speaks, speaks of a God who isn't just present and walking alongside, but a God who, in the Good News Bible, is called a mighty saviour. But in other translations, he can be called the horn of our salvation. And that God, that, that translation really means that he's not just present, but that he is actually active. He is active in transforming individuals' lives and situations. And Zechariah, over the last nine months when he wasn't able to speak, He's been able to see that for himself as his wife's physical shape changed, but also as her emotional state, as the way she was feeling about life and the people of the community too, how that changed. And so Zechariah now speaks of this God who is actively present with his people, transforming lives and making change. 
He also speaks in the beautiful last verse about the Saviour coming as the dawn of a new sunrise, a Saviour who will come and bring peace to his people. That peace turned out not to be a peace um, from war and conflict and strife, but an inner peace that folk would be able to live with every day. So what does Zechariah and these beautiful words have to say for us today? I think that many of you will know that Mike and I um, watch rugby whenever it's on. And last week, Doddy Weir, um, who was a, literally a huge man, but a big uh, Scotland player and then raiser of funds for motor neurone disease, died. And last night on BBC One, I think, and certainly on CBBC, Rob Burrows, another rugby league player, was on reading a bedtime story. He can no longer speak, but a computer using his voice was reading the story by the way that his eyes moved over the page as he read the page, which is quite amazing the how far the technology has come. And a couple of nights ago, I was watching a speech. I've got some pictures of these folk here, actually. Doddy Weir. And then a couple of nights ago, I was watching a speech by Michael J. Fox, who many of you may remember as the young boy in Back to the Future. Um, as he was given an award for his work for Parkinson's disease. All three of these men were high profile people, very successful in their chosen careers. And then their lives were literally shattered by the news that they were all suffering from incurable diseases. And if you listen or read things that all three of them have written, they will say that the shock was enormous and it took them some time to reflect and to think about what has happened to them and how they were going to go forward. But equally now, if you listen to all three of them and you hear what other people say of Doddy Weir, all of them would say that despite the terrible tragedy that has befallen them, they have learned so much. They have met ordinary people and been amazed by their courage and their inspiration. They've also been amazed in a different way and grateful for the amount of support and encouragement that their own communities that they were used to have shown to them as they have gone forward. And they themselves have become an inspiration for others. They've had time to spend quality time with their families, which perhaps had this not happened, they would never have had. These men, like Zechariah, have taken time and silence away from the media to think about the tragedies that have befallen them, but then they have gone on, and they've gone on to inspire and encourage and support so many other people by their actions. Zechariah did it by his words, they have done it by their actions. So this Advent, in the midst of all the busyness and the next few weeks that the excitement and all the things that are happening will ramp up. Remember that sunrise. Remember that moment of stillness as the sun comes up. Take some time to stand back and to reflect and to think in the silence. And I pray that the Holy Spirit, the God of peace, will come to you in that silence and that you will know his presence as we watch and wait and follow through this Advent. Amen. <coughs>
We're now going to sing again. Um, we're going to sing one of my favourite carols, carol stroke Advent hymns. Ian, we're not going to sing verse 3, if that's okay. We're going to stand to sing number 319 in the books um, of the Father's Love Begotten. Now let's spend a little time in the silence, praying for ourselves and for others as we bring to our Heavenly Father our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. God of wisdom, when we do not have the words, may we remain silent. 
when our words may betray us, bringing harm to others and ourselves. Again, may we remain silent. When someone else has the words we wish we had, then may we listen and learn and remain silent. But when ours is the only voice revealing truth and hope, loosen our tongues that we may speak out as Zechariah did. When the voices of others are stifled or ignored, may we advocate for them, and again, may we speak out. So this Advent, may we both reflect in silence and then speak out the story of hope, of peace, and of new birth into the world in which we live, a world for which we now pray. Today we pray for communities around the world where hope seems removed, where peace is a twisted joke, where future dreams focus more on survival, where women's rights and education are removed, where violence is unchecked, corruption rampant. We pray today for people to stand firm, for resilience and fortitude. We pray for those seeking to bring restoration and healing, for agencies seeking to bring honesty and truth, for world leaders and for people like us, ordinary folk, to find the courage to speak out, naming what we see taking place. In the silence, we think of those in the Ukraine and in other conflicts around the world as we approach Christmas. We think of those on this World AIDS Sunday, whose communities still struggle with understanding and medicines. And we think of those who have no home following the devastating effects of climate change. We pray for our own local community, for our friends and family. As the weeks get busier, the stress levels get higher, and the pressure, both financial and emotional, that mounts on households struggling to make ends meet. We pray for those who are under the care of our hospitals at this time of year, who are uncertain of what the future holds and whose treatment may impact on their holiday season. We pray too for those for whom this is a lonely and isolating time, where losses of friends and family down the years are amplified. In the silence, we name them before you. Advent God, we give thanks for all those who have gone before, who have given of themselves to build communities of faithful witness to you in our cities, towns and villages, and have celebrated the birth of your Son year on year. May we, in turn, build upon that work, finding new ways relevant to our own communities that share his message of hope and peace, good news and grace. And we ask all these our prayers today in the name of our Saviour, the one to be born in the stable, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
So our final hymn today is uh, in the Purple Hymn Books, number 475. We sing, it's an Advent hymn, Christ is Coming. As God has welcomed us in these moments, let us go to embrace each person we meet. As Jesus has been our servant of hope and grace, let us go to serve the most vulnerable around us. As the spirit of hope has filled us, let us go to empty ourselves of joy and peace for all. And as we go, May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all today, this week, and forevermore. Have a seat. The duty team will be, I think they're opening up the doors. I don't think I've got any extra messages to say to you this morning. So I hope that you have a good week and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.